Hey, it's Andrew with Car Cam Central. If you're looking for a stealthy, high-end, front-back dash camera, the Thinkware F770 should be at the top of your list. While expensive, it has many useful features, including a stealthy appearance, top-of-class video quality, advanced file protection, and great energy efficiency. If you want to know what a $400 camera will do for you, let's get into the review. The F770 was launched in May 2016 and priced in November at $300 for the front camera and $400 for the front and rear camera. It's designed by the Korean company Thinkware, better known in its home country as iNavi. Looking at the shape and design, it's fairly unique and stealthy. It's similar to a highway tow transponder when installed, which means most people won't even know it's a camera. On one side, you'll find the power port and the USB connection for the rear cable. These ports are hidden by a plastic flap. On the front, we find the glass lens, but there's no information on aperture or the number of elements. To adjust the angle, you can use your fingers or a coin, and there's enough rotation for trucks with vertical windshields to use this camera. Next to the lens is the translucent slot where the security LED shines from. It's quite fancy, and there's a number of different patterns. This feature is meant to scare off vandals during parked recording, but may also attract unwanted attention instead. On the back is the SD memory card slot, which supports up to 128GB cards. During video recording, the F770 records at 1080p, 30 frames a second for both the front and back cameras. As well, there is an internal GPS which logs your speed and position. It also has Wi-Fi, which can be used to control the camera, download save videos, and change settings, which is handy as there is no LCD screen to control the camera. We'll explain more later on. On the bottom, you see four slots which hold the 3M adhesive mount. Looking more closely at its construction, the plastic seems to be made of a high quality polymer. Pressing all around the camera and looking inside at its construction, I thought it was solidly built. Looking at the rear camera, it's significantly smaller than the main unit. It rotates 360 degrees and it feels sturdy when pressed and it has a refined look to its design. On the side, it has the USB port. Digging into the packaging, Thinkware did a great job on style, but less so on protection. It's attractive on the outside, but the cardboard was thin compared to other companies which use a double-walled box to guard against shipping damage. The camera is snugly placed at the top and wrapped in plastic to prevent scratches. Both the front and rear camera lenses have an additional plastic protector. Below the cardboard cradle were the accessories. You'll find the usual power cable, manual, and an extra mount. There's also an SD card reader, a branded 16GB Thinkware microSD card, and 5 cable holders, which aren't typically included in cheaper cameras. The rear camera comes in another box with the camera safely nestled in a 20-foot, 6-meter long USB cable. Disappointingly, there wasn't an extra adhesive pad included. After unboxing, I want to install the F770, which is made more difficult because of the rear camera. While you don't need tools, it will take longer to route and secure the rear cable to prevent tripping or damage to your wiring. The front camera is easily installed like most dash cameras. Align your camera and press the adhesive pad against the windshield. Next, plug in the 13-foot power cable. It's long enough for larger commercial vehicles. What was difficult was plugging the connectors into the small enclosure even with my slimmer fingers. Unplugging the cable was harder as my fingers constantly scraped the sharp plastic surrounding the ports. This was not an easy camera to remove. You'll want to be comfortable leaving it on your windshield. Next is the rear cable. Each car is different and you'll probably want to run it next to or under your seats for the easiest installation. The cable is thicker than most, which is good for durability but can be a challenge in tighter spaces. If you get it professionally installed in a hatchback, you may not have room to thread it through rubber connectors. I'm not a pro, so I left mine in the open, but it worked well as I kept the wiring clear of the hinge. After installation, the camera can be used right away, but you may want to change settings like the time and date. While there is a PC program and a smartphone app, the PC program is missing many settings and is better for video playback. Going to the app, Thinkware has created an iOS and Android version. Both have the same layout and functionality. Overall, it's easy to use, but I thought getting started could have been better. It's missing a walkthrough and the default Wi-Fi password is buried in your manual. You will need to manually turn on the camera's Wi-Fi, which is good for security. Wi-Fi enabled. Once connected, recording stops. Connected to a smartphone, recording stops. 
Inside, you can quickly stream videos from your camera, but finding the right file was harder as the folders aren't well named and there isn't any thumbnails, only a time and date stamp. To stream, you'll need to install the required MX player. Once installed, with one press, you're ready to view within 6 seconds and you can jump to any point in the video. If you choose a download instead, it's slow, taking 70 seconds for a 1 minute video, but that's typical. Moving into the camera settings, I'll only talk about the most popular features and a few issues I found. For a full list of settings, see the F770's manual. It's fantastic. My impression was Thinkware doesn't allow a lot of customization compared to other manufacturers. By default, the camera writes your speed in miles or kilometers onto the recorded video, which can be turned off in these settings. Your speed and position will still be embedded in the video file. You're also stuck with a Thinkware branding at the bottom. In the record settings, you can't change the resolution or length. It's 1080p, 1 minute long, and it always records on a loop. If you want action camera functionality, look elsewhere. You also can't change specific voice alerts like GPS connected. There are a number of spoken languages you can choose from. Once setup was complete, we looked at how easy it is to use day to day. As with all dash cameras, it does two things. One, it turns on and starts recording when it receives power. Second, it overwrites the oldest files on a loop so you never run out of space. When you first turn on the camera, you have no idea if it's working as there's no LED status light. After 4 seconds, there is a chime that plays if the memory card is working, but you have to wait until it fully boots up before you see a GPS light and a voice alert. Thankfully, it starts quickly for dual cameras at 17 seconds, and in most vehicles, the camera will be covered by your rearview mirror. Continuous recording will now start. I also tested the F770 under many conditions, including a missing, improperly formatted, and a failed SD card. You were always alerted when it wasn't recording, and it would nag you until fixed. Insert a memory card. Be aware that the camera is picky about SD cards. The camera will reject cards based off of some unknown criteria. We recommend the Lexar 633X. See our video for more details. Looking at the F770's physical buttons, the emergency record was hard to use. When pressed, it saves the previous and following 10 seconds of video in a separate file to prevent it from being overwritten. Unfortunately, the button is small and indistinct. It's located in the middle of the camera, making it hard to find while driving. You might also turn off the microphone by accident. There's also Thinkware's G-Sensor file protection. When a large shock is detected, it locks the 10 seconds before and after the event from being looped over. At the same time, Thinkware's dual save tech will simultaneously save a 6 second video to the separate internal memory chip. This may protect your footage if anything happens to your SD card. This is the first time I recommend the G-Sensor feature. Most of the time, it's too sensitive or not sensitive enough. Just for fun, Thinkware dropped a card to show off this dual save feature. The internal GPS has a number of benefits besides tracking position and location, which can be visualized on a map in the Thinkware player. You can also be warned about red light cameras, Thinkware's safety camera alert. Red light camera in 180 meters. In Canada, from my test, it wasn't reliable. At some intersections, I will only get alerts driving in one direction. On the way back, nothing. The S770 also includes forward collision and lane departure warning systems, which are supposed to help prevent accidents and tickets. While better than many cameras, you still get false or missing warnings. Moving on, let's talk about video quality. We compared the S770 side by side against a few cameras we recommend. While it handily beats out the Blackview DR650 GW, it falls behind our recent favorites, the $100 VFO A119 and the $250 Vicovation Opia 2. But that's not surprising. Looking at the front camera, the video quality is about the same as our $50 budget recommendation. The sharpness is good and motion blur about the same. The field of view is pretty good at 140 degrees, and for us, is a good balance between details and coverage of the front of your vehicle. Against the popular DR650, the quality during the day was quite close using the newest Blackview firmware, which boosts the video quality. I thought the Thinkware has a slight edge on sharpness. If you're wondering, the DR650GW and the newer 650S have nearly identical video quality, according to Blackview. At night, the Sony Exmor sensor helps boost the video quality just below our $100 pick. 
When compared against the Blackview DR650 GW, the sharpness is on par, but again, the dynamic range is better on the F770. You can see into the shadows, which gives you a lot more protection when it comes to capturing pedestrians or animals if they run onto the road. Against our $250 single lens recommendation, the Apia 2 is way sharper and clearer, but it's not a good comparison as each camera serves a different type of user. Let's look at the rear camera. Its main purpose is to add context to what your front camera captured. If someone was driving aggressively, you can show that their actions affected your driving. During the day, the quality is quite close to the A118, which is quite an accomplishment. Against Blackview, the S770 is clearly way sharper compared to the DR650, which is limited to 720p, a much lower resolution. Moving to nighttime, Thinkware has done a really great job with the rear video quality. If you compare it against with Blackview, there's a very clear difference. You can see license plates and people's faces much clearer with the F770. There's a lot more to talk about, but rather than overloading you with details, you can see more, including downloading raw videos in our written article. Overall, the F770's video quality, when compared to other two-channel systems, is amongst the best right now. If that's not good enough for you, your only choice for now is to purchase two separate cameras. We also examined the audio quality. Unfortunately, you can hear the camera giving off whines and hisses. While you can make up conversations, it's not as clean. I also froze the camera at minus 20 degrees Celsius for an hour to test winter conditions. Once I plugged it back in, I couldn't detect any problems or delays. I also tested the F770 to see if the focus is affected under hot temperatures. We placed it in our hacked thermal oven at 60 degrees Celsius for an hour. The max operating temperature, Thinkware recommends. I didn't see any changes in focus, which means Thinkware did a great job with engineering. The F770 also benefits from using capacitors, not lithium ion batteries. These are used to store energy to safely shut down the camera after losing power and are better at handling heat. Thinkware also added a thermal protection sensor and when tested found it shuts down a camera at 75 degrees Celsius, 167 Fahrenheit. Shutting down the system due to the low battery. This is great to protect the camera on hot days during parked recording and shows Thinkware has a high opinion of its heat resistance as a lower temperature limit could have been chosen. Looking closer at parking mode, it's a special feature to protect your parked vehicle while saving space on your memory card. You'll need to install Thinkware's hard wiring cable into your fuse box, which allows the camera to sense when your vehicle has turned off, but still gives it power. It has two connections, one to a switch circuit, the other to something constantly live, such as your dome lights. If this doesn't make any sense, we skipped many details as it's an extensive topic. We have links to resources in the description below. For the parking mode, you can choose from either motion detection or time lapse. In either mode, the bitrate is cut in half to save space. You don't sacrifice much quality as the environment is mostly at a standstill. Looking first at motion detection, the camera constantly records but only writes to the memory card when movement is picked up in either the front or rear camera. I sat in my car and made notes on movement so I can compare it against the recorded videos. Overall, the F770 was very reliable in capturing close by objects at either medium or high sensitivity. The camera also has buffered recording, which saves 10 seconds of video before motion was triggered. This is useful to capture more of the scene as no motion sensing algorithm is perfect. In the time lapse setting, the camera is constantly writing a frame of video every second to the memory card. Once parked recording has ended, the camera will let you know how many motion events and G sensor incidents were captured. During parking mode, motion detection recording, four and event detection recording, four occurred. The G-Sensor events are especially useful, so you can check your vehicle for possible damage. The S770 also protects your battery from being fully drained by having an internal voltage cutoff device. You can choose the threshold in the app, ideally a higher 12.2 or 12.3 volts to prevent damaging your battery. We also tested the energy efficiency, which largely determines how long the camera can record for. We measured the current in series and recorded 3.22 watts during two-channel motion detection mode. Compared to the two-channel black view, it uses 23% less energy. My only issue with parked recording is that you can't easily turn it off. The cable is hard to pull off, there's no physical switch. Overall, I think you will be quite happy about the F770's parking mode. It's effective, efficient, and it'll shut down in extremely hot weather to protect itself.
So is it worth it to get the F770? For more review and other tests, I think it is, especially if you're looking for a dual channel camera for parked recording. You also want to make sure you get the right SD card as well, as it can be picky. If you're not as interested in parking mode, using two cameras may be of better value, especially in video quality, but you'll trade off in convenience, the dual save feature, and it's another camera to maintain and check. We'll be doing a full guide comparing both types in the future. Make sure to subscribe if you want more. As well, I want to give full disclosure, saying that I got the front camera from Thinkware and the rear camera from Black Box My Car for free. However, they had no editorial control over what I could or could not say. And with that, that's the end of this review. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it, and thanks for watching.